Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day four in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're going to show you how to go from feeling like a beginner in Logic Pro to being an expert, where you're fully comfortable and capable to execute on your creative ideas in this amazing application. Today's video picks back up where video three left off. And in video three, I showed you how to get set up with your audio interface or USB microphone with Logic Pro so you could get right down to recording audio into your projects. As a reminder, if we go up to Logic Pro and go down to settings, over to the audio settings, right under the devices tab in the audio settings, we honed in on three settings in particular, starting with the output device. The output device is the device you'll be using for listening back to your Logic projects. And this could be anything from the built-in speakers on your Mac to software applications that provide audio routing to audio devices such as an interface or USB microphone. Then we made sure to specify the input device. And this device is how you're going to get audio from out in the real world into your computer. Once again, typically an audio interface or USB microphone. And lastly, we made sure to set the IO buffer size to an appropriate value based on what you are doing with Logic at that moment. And again, when you want to record into your projects, you typically want the smallest buffer size you can get away with without any sort of glitches or artifacts. So you typically start out with the smallest buffer size, which is 32 samples. And then when you're not recording, but you're just listening back to your projects, you typically want to work with the largest buffer size, which would be in this case, 1,024 samples. And the reason that you would choose a smaller buffer size when you're recording really boils down to one word, and that word is latency. Latency is a fancy word that we use to express how long it takes a signal to travel through your system and back out. For example, if you're recording yourself singing into a microphone, it takes time for your voice to travel through your microphone, through your audio interface, through your Mac and Logic Pro, and back out to your speakers and headphones. And that time that it takes, that latency can be so dramatic, so drastic that it can make it almost impossible to record because as you're singing into your microphone, you're hearing yourself in your headphones almost moments after you sing the words. And again, this could happen for audio tracks or software instrument tracks or anything else. And in fact, if you look right below the IO buffer size, you can see that Logic actually reports the resulting latency of your audio interface and current buffer size. So in my case with the Apogee Ensemble, which is a Thunderbolt interface, at a buffer size of 1024, we can see that the resulting latency, the amount of time it takes an audio signal to pass through the system and back out, it will take 47.8 milliseconds. Whereas if we set the buffer size to 32 samples, it will only take 2.9 milliseconds, which is a tremendous difference. So our goal is to record without any latency, but smaller buffer size does require more effort from your Mac. And thus, we're trying to negotiate and ensure our system is stable while we're trying to record without latency. So I want to explore these two extremes of the buffer size right now with you. So let's set the IO buffer to 1,024 samples. And let's click Apply. And let's close the audio settings window by clicking on the red circle in the upper left-hand corner. Now, once again, looking in the inspector here or in the mixer, we're going to set the input for audio track one to an instrument input on my audio interface. So if we click on the input dropdown, we're going to set the input, in my case, to input 11. But you would set the input to whatever's most appropriate for your own audio device. Cool. And we can see that this has been reflected in the mixer and the inspector simultaneously because, again, audio track one right here corresponds with audio channel strip one in the inspector and the mixer. All right, so let's close the mixer. From here, I'm going to record enable audio track one, and I'm going to play my guitar so we can hear it through Logic Pro Software Mixer and make sure everything's connected as it should be. All right, sweet. We can hear and see that the guitar is playing through Logic Pro Software Mixer. That's great. We're in good shape to begin recording. I don't know if you can tell, but for me, there is a little bit of a delay when I play my guitar and when I hear it in my headphones. To better illustrate this fact, I'm going to make sure to enable the direct mixer for my audio interface. So if we go to the separate mixer application for my audio interface, and most audio devices provide a direct mixer for latency-free recording, I'm going to unmute the direct mixer for my guitar input number one. So what we're going to do from here is, is I'm going to press record up here in the control bar, 
and I'm going to record a little riff that I have. And as I'm recording, you will hear not only the guitar through Logic Pro, but also the direct guitar signal straight from the audio interface. And this way you'll be able to hear that delay or latency between Logic Pro Software Mixer and the direct signal of my guitar. Let's give it a try right now. All right, so I'm sure you could hear that difference in timing between Logic's mixer and the direct mixer of my audio interface. And in this case, it could be a bit distracting to play with this delay or latency. So once again, we're going to go up to Logic Pro, go down to settings and go to the audio settings once more. And we're gonna set the IO buffer size this time to that of 32 samples. And once again, we could see the round trip latency from the guitar, through my interface, through my Mac and Logic Pro, and back out to my headphones is now 2.9 milliseconds. That's quite a bit faster than it was before. Okay, let's click apply. Let's close the audio settings. Let's return the playhead to the beginning of the project, either using the go to beginning button at the top here, or by pressing return on your Mac's keyboard. So let's record enable once again. I'm gonna begin recording again, either by pressing on the record button in the control bar or using key command R on my Mac's keyboard. And let's see if we've reduced that latency. Again, we're gonna to listen to the guitar through Logic Pro and directly from the audio interface. If that latency has been reduced, we should hear less of two separate signals and almost like they're one single signal. Let's give it a try. All right, that's a dramatic difference. We don't hear so much two separate guitars anymore as we hear one sort of phasey signal. And that's because there is still a timing difference between Logic Software Mixer and the direct signal, but that latency or delay is now small enough that we aren't perceiving two separate guitars. So now if you want to record into your project, no problem, you're not gonna perceive any sort of delay when you're recording. At this point, the issue of whether or not you hear a delayed signal really depends on your setup and how complex your project is. Because at the moment, we're just recording a single guitar into an empty project. There's not a whole lot going on. And at the moment, my system seems to be able to handle a buffer size of 32 samples just fine. But as your projects progress and you add more tracks, more instruments, more plugins, more routing, it may get harder and harder to be able to set a buffer size small enough so you can record without that latency. Just as a really quick example, I'm going to go to the stereo output in the inspector, which you can also find in the mixer as well. These are one and the same. And I'm going to open a plugin. It doesn't really matter right now what plugin I'm using and what these functions are, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the look ahead on the adaptive limiter under the dynamics plugin category. I'm gonna set the look ahead to 200 milliseconds. And what this is doing essentially is it's adding latency to the project. So now if we close the plugin, if I return the playhead to the beginning of the project, and if I try playing through Logic Software Mixer, let's take a listen to how much delay or latency there is now. Well, holy cow, the latency we were dealing with before was like nothing. This is so significant even at a buffer size, again, if we go to Logic Pro, settings, audio settings, at a buffer size of 32 samples, that latency is so extreme, I can't record with any sort of confidence. So how do you get around that issue? In both these scenarios, we need some sort of workaround. So what we're gonna use is, is low latency monitoring mode in Logic Pro. Let's go up to Logic Pro, go down to settings, and let's go to audio. And under the general tab in the audio settings, Right at the bottom is an option to turn on low latency mode. So let's click on that right now. Let's now try to record into our project once more. Here we go. And just like that, the latency is gone. Low latency monitoring mode has bypassed anything in the monitoring path that may be causing latency. In this case, anything that's creating more than five milliseconds of latency. And if we go back to that adaptive limiter, I've set it 
to create 200 milliseconds of latency. So with low latency mode enabled, this adaptive limiter has been bypassed. And once we're done recording, we can turn off low latency mode to bring the adaptive limiter back into the project. So the point is, anytime you're recording, set the buffer size as small as you can while still having a system that's stable, that's not running into glitches or artifacts or system overloads. And if setting the buffer size to a smaller value is not making a difference in terms of latency or it's just not possible for you at that time because your system can't handle it, that's where low latency mode comes in. And this will bypass anything in the monitoring path that is creating that delay or latency. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow in this Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.